The term polynomial means many terms, and it means that you have more than one term in a given expression. It also requires that each term in the expression have a positive power. So if anything has like a x to the negative 1 or x to the negative 4 term or something similar, then it isn't part of a polynomial. But as long as everything has a positive term or a positive power, you can have as many terms as you want. Here we're going to identify the coefficient of each term in these polynomials, the constant term, the degree of each of the terms, and then the degree of the polynomial. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, we'll just take it step by step. Our first term here is x to the fifth. So the coefficient of that would be the number of x to the fifths that we have. In this case, 1, because there's sort of a hidden 1 there. So our coefficient there is 1. Our second term is negative 3x cubed. So our coefficient there is negative 3. C equals to something confusing there. And our third term, our coefficient would be 4. Then we have a coefficient negative 5. And finally, we have sort of an x to the 0 term here. Remember, anything to the 0 is 1. 7 times 1 is just 7. So we can think of this as an x to the 0 term. And the coefficient then would be 7. Then we need the constant term. That would be the x to the 0 term, so 7. The degree of each term is the power associated with each of those terms. So our first one, the degree is 5. Then we have a degree of 3 and 2, and 1, and 0. And this sort of descending powers is pretty common. In fact, that's how you write something in a standard form, is write it in descending powers of x. And then the degree of our polynomial is the highest degree in the polynomial, in this case 5. So our polynomial degree is 5. Our second example, we have coefficients of 1, negative 3, 8, and 12. And 12 is also our constant term. And then our degrees are 4. And here our degree is 5 because it's degree of 3 for the x plus 2 for the y. So the degree of this term is 5. Here it's 1. And here it's 0. So then the degree of our polynomial is the highest degree in the polynomial. In this case, again, like the other one, it's 5 because 5 is that highest degree. In this example, we need to rearrange the terms in the polynomial so that they're in standard form, and then indicate the leading term and leading coefficient of each polynomial. So the first thing we'll do is rearrange them into standard form. And that just means that we're going to rearrange them into descending powers, um, usually of x. Uh, sometimes, obviously, as in the case of b and c here, you don't have an x. So then you just use the highest power term and then go in descending powers of it. So in our first one, we have 3x cubed. That's the highest power of x. And then we have, I'm sorry, that's a negative 3x cubed. Always take the sign to the left of the number. And then we have a positive 4x and a positive 7. So now that's in standard form. And now we can identify the leading term. So the leading term is negative 3x cubed. And the leading coefficient is negative 3. So the coefficient of that leading term. For example, b, we have negative a cubed. Then we have plus positive ab. And then we have positive 2b. So we have a to the third, a to the first, and a to the 0. Then our leading coefficient is negative a to the third. And our, I'm sorry, our leading uh, term is negative 8 to the third, and our leading coefficient is negative 1, because we have a sort of a hidden 1 there. And then our third example, or uh, example C, we have b squared, and then we have negative 4b, and positive 4. So we have a b squared term, a b to the first term, and a b to the 0 term. Our leading term is b squared, and our leading coefficient would be that same hidden